Hey everybody, welcome to The Art of Comics. It's me, Andre Salazar. Uh, episode today, we're going to talk about the 24-hour comic book day. This is a 24 hours a challenge that started with the creator of the book, Understanding Comics, Scott McCloud. Uh, he started years ago, and I've been doing it for about eight years now consecutively. And this year, I finished my project, and I'm going to share it with you. Uh, basically, you got 24 hours to make 24 pages. And so I printed off these different ones I've done throughout the years. Uh, you can do it however you want to do it. I've done it on paper. I've done it full-sized. I've done it digitally. I did a Fumetti last year with just like cut out magazines. And this year I decided to do one all in a book. So it's this size and we're going to walk through this whole freaking thing. So I did it. I wanted to try something different. Uh, this isn't about execution or rendering or great design. This is more about an experimentation of the instant creativity, moments of you know inspiration and kind of tapping into the source, we'll call it. The source, which is this ability to kind of like streamline, focus your creative energies and create something cool and new. So that's what this is. So there will be a lot of mistakes and things that I'll look back and like, what the freak was I thinking? But that's part of it. That's part of the fun. So uh, with that said, let's go ahead and turn the camera over. And what I'm going to do is, by the way, if you want these copies of these, my Patreon, I have copies of all these digitally. And as well as what I'm going to do, because I have seven of these now, which is a good chunk of paper, I'm going to collect them in a kind of graphic novel form, full size. These are ash can. I'm gonna make it a full size comic book sized book and we're gonna put it on Kickstarter probably in a couple months. So I thought, what the heck? Let's do a Kickstarter of all the 24 hour comic books and then a couple other side little small projects I've done on Patreon. So check out the Patreon for that and Kickstarter coming soon. So with that said, let's go look at this year's um, experimentation. Let's do it. Okay, everybody, here we are. Uh, this is something new. I basically had never worked in this format. Um, I want to try each time a different format, right? So like I said, I do digital. I've done a full size, things like that. I've never done like in a book. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to do this kind of cream colored paper and do it in a sketchbook. Uh, oh, this is a this is actually for my Patreon, a new comic I'm doing called The Garment District. Uh, I would recommend checking out on Patreon. So. I thought, why don't I just do this and let's do each page is like a double page spread. So there's 24 of these in this size. This is the final version of the book. So uh, what I did was that morning, I, I uh, looked for an old story, actually. I'm doing it differently. Generally what you do is you, you know, you start from scratch with no idea. This year I thought, you know, I've done this seven times. Why don't I do it a little differently? Let's go find an old story. So that Saturday morning, I went through my archive of old novellas and stories I've written and I wrote this novella called Calexico about a family across the border of the U.S. Uh, Mexico border. One cousin, Caridad, is in the Mexican side. The other cousin is on the U.S. side and they kind of fall in love and it's one of these like kissing cousins, you know, uh, coming of age, kind of exploring sexuality stories, all in the backdrop of this massive powerful family who have some underworld connections okay so crime underworld mixed with you know coming of age love story and that was that's the idea of it so i got the script uh that i had written a while back and i started you know chopping it up trying to find where i can make 24 pages out of it and probably got around the chapter one and so with that i had my chapter one set up 24 pages and then I had to break down each page and all that stuff. So I did that. I wanted to set up some sort of a family tree. Again, it's an easy way to cheat. When you're doing these 24 hour comics, you need to cheat. You got to do big splash pages. You got to like copy panels. You got to do all those kind of things that make things quick, right? Wally Wood style. So that's what I did. <clears throat> so this is an easy way to kind of like set things up. And I could have actually, if I had more time, I would have put like more relationships and, you know, he's doing this and he works here and, you know, he's in Indio and he's in Mexicali and that kind of stuff. But I, I didn't have time because I got to get going. The other thing I did was after I broke down the script, I 
I had I made little thumbnails like something like this on a piece of paper and I broke out each page each 24 page what it looks like so I did that so did the script broke out the script broke out each page with thumbnails then I went to pencils and I actually sketched this all out on pencils and then I inked it and that was too many steps I should have known better and what I should have done was go straight from thumbnail to the inks. I would have skipped the pencil step. It would be a little bit looser, a little bit more organic, and probably better. Unfortunately, I didn't do that, and so I ran out of time. So there's some things here that, that kind of got screwed up. Again, it's not about execution. Uh, I have no problem showing you stuff that I don't like that I did. It's because that's part of learning. So, uh, you know, I'm not afraid to show the the ugly stuff too. I ain't one of those dudes. So here we go. So main characters, Caridad Hernandez Lopez and Sebastian Trevino Hernandez. Okay. These are the two cousins that fall in love, or at least are under, trying to understand their sexuality. We'll say that. Okay. Page one, page two, unfortunately, a lot of exposition. And I just wanted to show how they, how the families are started. So I could have put this actually here probably if I had, had thought of it. Um, but at the time I did. <clears throat> Quick little loose sketches of kids playing in the grass. This is actually one of my, my first memories as a kid was in the backyard playing in the grass with the hose. And so um, we kind of add that in there, just quick little sketches. Then we get into more kind of traditional comics through, for the rest of the story, starting here in SeaWorld as little kids. Again, black and white. I'm not putting any color at this point. I put some drop shadows just to kind of give it some nice spotting blacks. But, you know, as you can see, it's very loose because you don't have much time to play with stuff. Uh, and then you have panels like this, which are kind of gross and ugly, but that's okay. Because, again, it's about conveying the idea of an aquarium and fish. It's not about that is a really cool stingray, you know. So <clears throat> comics are about communicating. So if you get the idea of what it is, it's kind of good enough, at least in this, this stage. So we did that. We set up their kind of growing up together as little kids. Uh, and now here's kind of a big scene where they're playing with Star Wars toys. And this is where we introduce this idea of like, uh, I'll show you mine if you show me yours kind of doctor uh, situation. And so I wanted to put some color in here, just little splatters of color. And I thought, well, okay, we'll make her dialogue boxes red and his blue just for the hell of it. I don't really know if it works. But again, this is about experimenting. Next, uh, so we have that scene, kind of the resolution. We're not showing any nudity at this point. Uh, this is wonky, but that's okay. I actually kind of like this panel a lot, and I, I like this. This one's funky, but that's okay. You just got to go with it. If I get one or two good panels a page, I'm happy. <laughs> okay, so we're happy. Uh, I did then put some like distressing stuff, and I don't know if this works, actually, if I think about it. Critically, it's probably too messy. It probably would look better if I just blacked all that. It would just look cleaner. It's a little too too chaotic, so I'd change that. This is okay, but again, it's a week. I think that's kind of fun. Older cousin sees what's up. So that's page three. Now we're into page four. Uh, a little bit older now. Now we're sh sharing comic books. A little bit older, and they're reading comics on the floor, which I've done many times. Again, we're putting a little bit of color for the narration uh, but you know that, that there you go now this is where I thought okay let's really play with color and let's do prisma colors and I thought about doing that for the whole thing now I didn't know how I wanted to establish the colors like did I want to do the full palette did I want to just find some uh, you know um, opposite colors so here we have kind of uh, these are of course the on the opposite complementary colors on the on the color wheel. So I thought it'd be kind of fun to do that. I don't know if it really works to be honest. I I kind of like this panel, and I kind of like this, but I'm not sure if this works. I probably would not do this again. I would if I scan this digitally. I might even take out all the color, and just keep it black and white. Um, that's my take. Although it would make this gray, so I don't even know if that'd work. But Rendering's fine, but yeah, the idea is the, the, the cousins are lost now. The mothers are kind of freaking out, and so they're lost in the desert, playing around, goofing around. 
Again, these pages try to make big panels because you want to get it done. Uh, I actually kind of liked this, what I was doing in the background, but then I think the brown screwed it up. So I would probably not do the brown here. In this, I might even make this black now, the background, and just do make this all black and make it darker. Um, so that's what I probably would do now if I were to change it. But this is an important scene because they meet these um, illegal, this little illegal family, and they are hiding in this barn. And that'll be important later on in the story. We don't get to it here in this 24-hour comic, but there's some kind of uh, human trafficking going on in the family. So that is important as these kids uh, are introduced to a kind of a scary situation. So we have this, this is okay, it's not bad. Again, it's pretty loose and stuff, but I, I kind of like it. Now we have one of the cousins, Chewy. He's out looking for him uh, on his bike and he sees a barn, he goes in, he sees him and we don't know what happens. He just tells the kids to go outside we don't know what goes on. He's wiping his hands with something. We don't know, but we're, we make an assumption that something went down. Because we say, after that day, Tio Chewy would be known to begin drinking more in the rest of, for the rest of his life. So he became a drinker after that day. So we know something happened. Here's a Laguna Beach shot. I did a, I did a quick little reference on Google, and I just kind of sketched it out really quick. I was really going to put colors here. I was going to make some greens and some blues in the sky, and I didn't. And I think I'm going to keep it that way. <laughs> Although, if I had enough duo, duo uh, Zipatone, I would probably put Zipatone in the sky. Um, and I was going to do that. I was going to add Zipatone on this. But it just, Zipatone's kind of expensive. And I didn't want to do it on this. And I just thought, nah, I'm going to use it for other stuff. Here we go. A little hug. A little wonky, but that's okay. This panel's horrible with the background of the car, but that's okay. And then kind of classic kid looking back. Again. You have literally one hour start to finish with each of these pages for 24 hours. And you might think like, oh, one hour is a lot of time. One hour is not a lot of time to do the lettering, to do everything. So you just don't have time to like make it nice. You just have to put in some blacks. You kind of figure out what this is and you go. I'm trying to convey some motion. Here again, uh, this is now the next summer, the next year. He moved to Laguna Beach. Uh, Sebastian's family left the Imperial Valley, moved to Imperial, moved to Laguna Beach, and now in the summers he comes to visit his cousin. So this is a little SUV. They come again, not even fully finished, but just like good enough, right? They get back to the ranch. He goes back to his old house, and uh, we have some. Some. This is now he's a beginning as a teenager, and he's thinking about his cousin. And he then kind of self-satisfies himself thinking about her. So we're getting these ideas of these kind of like uh, as a young boy. Now we have the big family reunion. And here's the cousin. And she is pretty. Or that's the, the concept. Uh, and we get a little bit of background of the family talking business. We don't know what that necessarily is. But they're talking about the tunnels. And there's, you know... We get some ideas of something's happening, but not everything. And then she says, I que chichona. Chichona in Spanish means big chested. So uh, there's a, you know, a lot of times Latin families are pretty up in your face about things. So she's just straight up like, you got big boobs. And it's embarrassing to Sebastian, who is well aware of that, <laughs> you know. Now, again, I go back, notice what I did. I, I decided like, oh, let's go back and do the colors. I don't think I, I don't know. Part of me does like this. Part of me doesn't. I don't know. I'm so used to using watercolors. I'm not used to using Prismacolors or any kind of thing. So I just, it doesn't look good. But again, I'm just going by speed. So, and I would change his color of this vest. I would change that. A little Space Bear. Those of you who know who Space Bear is. Uh, so yeah, here's the cousins. They're kind of kicking in the bedroom. They're chatting it up about uh oh yeah she talks about talking about the drug tunnels uh so they they hear about this stuff in the news but they don't really know that they're actually connected to these tunnels um so they kind of chit chat some of these again some of this is not horrible drawing for just being quick and at times i do like the kind of shadows of the prisma colors and then there are times i don't 
So I'm kind of like on the fence. And I'm sure some people will comment on what they think. And that's fine. Uh, some of these faces aren't bad. This she's Actually, she's not horrible in this face. But I don't know if I like the Prismacolor on him. And he looks... Uh, yeah, this doesn't work. So here we got this... Again, notice I'm doing this a couple times, this big wide panel. I did it a couple times, wide panel here. It's just to take real estate and just like, okay, there we go, boom. And then we get a little bit of like moment of closeness. Uh, again, pleasure. We uh, Then I copied that panel before, which is the, you know, self-pleasure panel. And now her, this is her, I didn't do the colors, notice. I'm kind of going back and forth. I just. One, I didn't have time to do it, so I just did it where I could and kept it there. And uh, we, we learned that she's struggling, too, with her feelings. <clears throat> that they're both, like, kind of tempting fate with their friendship. Uh, this is, we're getting towards the end of the comic now. Uh, again, 24 pages is page 18. We're at a community pool. I would totally put more darks. There's, like, no darks here, so I would... I'd probably put all this in some sort of uh, duo shade or something. Uh, they're at the pool. Now they're going to go help the kids at the bathroom get cleaned up. So they're drying the kids. They get the kids dry. And now we're going to get into, i got to be careful with YouTube, but now we get in this moment where she now undresses herself. We'll just be quick because I don't want to get slammed. We have a little bit of some nudity in here. Uh, and uh, they kind of expose themselves to a point, and then she kind of freaks out. And it, it, again, it's that confusion of sexuality as a kid, and you know, do I, don't I want it type of thing. Um, and this is horrible. These are some horrible faces. This is towards the end of this is like 3 a.m., where I'm just like, I can't draw no more. You know, I'm just exhausted. Um, and she makes this book and she gives him this little comic book and she becomes this huge comic book fan and she leaves and i actually kind of like this right here and he it's called super primos which means cousins super cousins and so i actually kind of like this right here and so he opens it up and this is the last of the, so the last of the comic are these these pages of the book so we start off here <clears throat> and so i try to make like these little like lines as though it's like real paper and, uh, you know, just kind of a silly action comic. But then it starts changing things. And then we see that it gets kind of romantic. And then it kind of goes into this really um, organic, amorphous kind of thing. And then last page is it goes full on, like, sexual, tantric, you know, kum uh Kama Sutra stuff. And so she's drawing these like erotic drawings for him about cousins. And so she's kind of like putting that and then he's like kind of freaking out about it. And so that's where we stop the comic and then you go, boom, there you go. We don't know what happens. Uh, you have to, uh, <laughs> you have to buy the book. So that's it right there. Actually the whole novella, if you want to read that whole novella, it's all on the patron too, which is, a, I know I, I feel like I'm shilling the patron a lot today, but Hey man, that's just where my stuff is, okay? So anyway, that's the that's what happened. If you guys want, maybe uh, let me know in the comments. I could do another book I did, this book I did, um, which was a year previous. I also have Soy Chicano, which is another one I did. I printed these out. I was selling these at comic conventions. And I think, I think it's a good idea to kind of collect them all in one big one. That'd be kind of fun. Maybe I'll even go back and revise some of the art in them. Like, that's kind of fun. Uh, but anyway, if you want me to, I can walk through each of these. Again, check out the Patreon to read them if you want. And uh, look out for Kickstarter. Maybe I'll put them all together in a big book. Thanks for watching, guys. Have a good one. And take care. Bye.